Well, welcome back to Beale Science Channel. We're going to look a little more in depth at the mole and start talking about the calculations that we can do with the with the mole. Now, the mole is so important because in chemistry, when we start doing dimensional analysis and we start doing converting, all we have to do is get everything into the mole, and then we can turn it into anything we want, which is what makes the mole so very important. Now remember, if you go back to an earlier video, you're going to find out that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. It doesn't matter what those particles are. For example, if we had one mole of eggs, we would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd eggs. So it doesn't matter what it is. We could have one mole of sodium. That means we've got 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd sodium atoms. So I'm going to put atoms of sodium. Sodium is Na. Now if this confuses you, go back to the video right before this one, which gives you the whole rundown of what a mole is. For this one, we're going to take it to the next level. And we're going to start to figure out, all right, why is this mole useful? Why do I need to know this to be able to do chemistry? So it all boils down to converting. Now I'm going to give you my um, brief overview of any time you run into a conversion in chemistry, I'm going to make it as super simple as possible. Because I don't like to memorize formulas. I'm not good at it. And really, in most cases in chemistry, there's no reason. You just need to follow these simple rules down here. You need to write down what you know. And what you know is whatever's given to you in the equation. In this case, it's 2.25 moles of copper. So I'm going to write that down. 2.25 moles of copper. Now, the next part I'm going to do is set up conversion to cancel units. But one thing I should always try to do is figure out, well, what am I trying to get my answer in? In this case, I'm trying to find out the number of atoms. All right. So how do I do that? Again, I don't want to memorize formulas, so I'm just going to use some simple dimensional analysis. For me, the way to do that is I got to get rid of moles of copper. In order to get rid of moles of copper, I need to put moles of copper down here on the bottom side of the line because they're on opposite sides of the line. They will cancel out. The great thing is, once I have a mole, which you can see right here, I can turn it into anything I want. So if I can turn it into anything I want, I should be able to turn it into atoms of copper. Well, how do I do that? I use this conversion right here. One mole of copper equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. Well, that works out nicely. Now look. This is going to cancel. They're on opposite sides of the line. I haven't drawn it in here, but technically this is over 1. I won't ever draw that in again. We just need to remember it's on opposite sides of the line. So those are going to cancel out. The only units I have left now are atoms of copper. So this is going to work out. Now, I'm going to bring up my calculator. And I'm going to show you some super, super simple tricks for how to take care of problems like this. So don't overdo it and don't work too hard. Now my calculator's taking up a little bit of space, but that's okay. Um, we've got 2.25, so I'm going to go 2, maybe, clear that out, 2.25, 2.25 times, now here's where people get into trouble with these scientific notation numbers. They try to do the caret and the parentheses, and if it isn't all perfectly correct, you're going to get it wrong. Stop it with the caret. You don't have to do that in science. Because, watch, we've got 6.02. There's this button called EE. EE is exponential notation or scientific notation. I tell my students it literally means times 10 to the. So look, it's going to take care of this times 10 to the. I'm going to hit that times 10 to the 23. So look, 6.02. This e, they just shortened it up to one e, exponential notation. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. No parentheses, no worries, no nothing. Enter. Look, I've got 1.35 with some other numbers. E, 24. That e means times 10 to the. So I've got 1.35 times 10 to the 24. Let's go ahead and write this in. We've got 1.35 times 10 to the 24th, and our units on this are atoms of copper. 
right here. It's the only thing we had left. So here, this is what makes the mole so useful. You're going to find out through a series of problems. We turn everything into the mole because once we have it in the mole, we can turn it into anything we want. Let's try another practice problem here. Calculate the number of molecules in 10.5 moles of water. Again, I don't memorize formulas. I don't need to. I've got 10.5 moles of water. That's my known. That's what's given to me. So I have to start somewhere. I might as well start with this. I've got 10.5 moles of water, H2O. Now, I have people that run into the problem right here. They're like, I don't know what to do next. You should always know what to do next. You wrote down what was given or what you know, but you don't want your answer in moles of water because it says the number of molecules. The only way to get rid of this moles of water is to set up a conversion factor with, you guessed it, moles of water down here because now those are on opposite sides of the cancellation line. And I'm in moles, so I'm trying to get into molecules. Can I turn moles into molecules? Yes, I can turn moles into anything I want. So let's do this. I'm going to put molecules. Now, MOL here stands for mole. you got to be careful. M-O-L-E-C is molecules of H2O. Now watch. These are going to cancel out. They're on opposite sides of the line, like this. I'm left with molecules of water. That's what I want my answer in. Now I just need to know, what do I put in these two spots right here? Well, if I go back to my conversion right here, it says 1 mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. It doesn't matter what those particles are. So I've got 1 mole. Let's say that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. And this is all I have left. So let's bring up this calculator again and clear it out from the last problem. And I've got 10.5, 10.5, which is my number right here, times 6.02 EE means times 10 to the, and I've got a 23 right there. So I'm going to put the 23 in, hit the equals. Here's my answer, 6.32 times 10 to the 24. 6.32 times 10 to the 24th. I always have to have the units. If you don't have the units, it's wrong. Because we don't deal with just numbers in chemistry. We deal with objects. And in this case, it's molecules of water. So we're on a roll. Let's keep going. All right, what if we're going to go the other direction? So we've been converting from moles into particles. But we can go the other direction just as easily. And we don't need to memorize anything to be able to do this. So, let's try one out. How many moles is 5.75 times 10 to the 25 molecules of carbon dioxide? So here's what's given. This is my known. 5.75 times 10 to the 25 molecules, I'm going to abbreviate that M-O-L-E-C, of CO2. Now remember, I need some sort of conversion factor here. Even if you don't know what to do next, I know I don't want my answer in molecules of CO2, so I have to have molecules of CO2 here so that those two will cancel out. Now, molecules can only be turned into one thing. We could change this from particles to molecules. We could change that to anything. So that means we can change molecules into moles. So I'm going to put moles of CO2 here. And right here it says one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. I'm going to cancel some things just to keep track. I always like to do this because I've found it's really hard to get it wrong if you do that. The only thing I have left is molecules of CO2. I'm sorry, moles of CO2. Sorry, sorry. And that's what I want my answer in is moles of CO2. So I get out the trusty calculator. I'll clear it out from the last problem. And what we're typing in here is 5.75. Let me move it up here a little bit. 5. 0.75 times 10 to the 25. Remember we put EE 25, 5.75 times 10 to the 25. Let me move this so we can see. Then let's go up here with it. We need to divide it by because we're taking that number right there times 1. Let me get it out of the way. Times 1 divided by this. But you don't have to do the times 1. You can just literally go straight to the divided by. So I'm going to hit divided by. 6.02, 6.02 EE means times 10 to the 23rd. Hit equals, it looks like I have 95.5 
And what am I working in? Moles of CO2. So I had 95.5, 95.5 moles of CO2. How do I know that's the, the units I use? Well, that's all I have left, and that's what I wanted the answer in. So um, this is pretty self-explanatory, right? You can go either direction you want. You can flip-flop those conversion factors, put them any way you want. The whole point here is once we learn about the mole and we can convert things into the mole, we can convert them into anything we want. So the next step for this is something called the molar mass. That's the mass of one mole of any substance. So stick with me, go to the next one, and learn about molar mass.